it's that time again. It's spring recital season. And oh boy, does that bring a lot of work for us all, doesn't it? This week, we are going to take a look at how these performances, whether it's a spring recital, winter recital, fall recital, can do so much more than just showcase our students' talents. We're going to be examining how we can use these as unique marketing opportunities because there are so many ways to use recitals for both internal and external marketing. And if you don't know what I mean by that, stick around. We're going to define it. (laughs) In this broadcast, we're going to talk about how to create buzz about your recitals. We're going to discuss how you can use recitals to get marketing opportunities like photos, videos, etc. without having to do it all yourself. And we're going to talk about how recitals are the perfect opportunities to boost your online reviews. And because I know that recital season is busy with a capital B. Our goal is to keep all of these steps and pieces of advice super simple so that it's not adding tons of things to your plate, but actually just streamlining things and making things so much simpler. So are you ready? Let's make the recital season not just a performance, but a powerful moment in your studio's story. Now, before we get into all of the goodness. I'm going to play a little music and make sure that we're going live in all the places and spaces. So while I do that, please let me know where you're tuning in from, whether you're watching live or on the replay. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to get to know you more. We'll be right back. Welcome to the broadcast, everyone. So happy to be here with you on this lovely Wednesday. Um, We are going to be talking about recitals and how to use recitals as these beautiful marketing opportunities. And I'm going to be sharing a lot of tips that I've used in my studio over the year and they've uh, over the years, and they've worked fabulously. So I cannot wait to share those with you. And of course, we're ready to learn out loud from one another. So if you have tips on spring recitals, please be sure to share those in the comments down below. If you are new here, let me pause and introduce myself. My name is Sarah Campbell. I'm a business strategist, marketing, and mindset coach for music studio owners and online ed experts just like you. And we go live here most Wednesdays where we talk about those topics. And today we're going to be diving into the marketing and business side of things. And it's going to be good because let's be honest about some things. We work really hard for our recitals, whether it's a spring recital, a fall recital, winter recital, you work really hard to make those happen. And we sometimes see these as like opportunities for our studios to grow, but unless we're being strategic about it, it doesn't necessarily work. So what we're going to do today is we're going to examine how we can use these opportunities to grow our businesses, whether it's through attaining new students or retaining current students and like boosting your online presence um, and community presence as well, because we're going to be talking about networking. So We're going to be talking about all those things with the idea of let's turn those recitals into gold. (laughs) All right. So we have um, all of the things set up for you today. So before we get into the tips, if you would like, there is a hair. Sorry, guys. All right. That's driving my bonkers. Um, All right. So before we get into the tips today, um, I'll let you know that we do have the the Savvy Sarah Bot set up and ready to send you show notes. So if you are on Instagram or on Facebook, if you drop the word recital down below, she will reach out to you via messenger and send all of the information that we're going over today. Um, And she'll also send your information around how you can join our newsletter, which we send out every Monday um, with all kinds of links to resources that I find interesting, things that might make you laugh, things that might make you smile, and things that might make you think a little bit. So I hope you'll join us there over on our newsletter. Um, I see we've got some great people tuning in. Susan here from Toledo and... Uh, hey, Charlie. Oh, nice to see you. It's just, hey, Coach Sarah. <laughs> Shakay is tuning in from Las Vegas. Hello, hello. Um, Melissa is tuning in from Oklahoma. Good to see you, friend. 
Uh, Marie Lee says, perfect timing, planning the details of our recitals today. And we've got uh, Harmony Music Education watching over on YouTube from Spring, Texas. So good to see you all. All right. Um, Instagrammers, say hello over there. I see Behave, uh, Behave Voice Studio. BHA Voice Studio. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> it's sometimes hard to read those Instagram names. And I see Jennifer Jackson and Naomi Brutes is also tuning in. So, um, so nice to see you all. Okay, let's get to it because I I love to talk about recitals. And can can I just like I I have to say all right, my studio is intentionally small now, so I can spend more time pr- creating resources and working with music educators like you, um, I do miss doing the spring recitals. I do miss it. Um, So I'm going to be sharing a lot of stories from the recitals that I've done over the years and some of the ways that we've made them really unique. Um, All right. So let's unpack the issue and kind of frame why why this topic. Uh, So I mentioned this at the top. Spring recitals take a lot of effort, right? That you work really, really hard um, to put these events together. I, I think that sometimes most clients don't understand the amount of work that goes into putting on a fabulous performance. But we, we teachers, we know. So first and foremost, can we please give everyone who does recitals a big round of applause? <laughs> Because it takes a lot of effort. It can also take a lot of time and money to make these events happen. And because we are often sole proprietors and we are the only person who's in charge of putting this stuff together, um, it can be easy to miss out on opportunities to use recitals as a way to market our studio. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over um, things like creating buzz ahead of the recital, um, how to capture all those moments in a way that doesn't have you running around like a chicken with your head cut off um, because you're trying to organize all the kids in a row or adults in a row and make sure that all the things get on stage and all that stuff. And it's really hard to balance all the things. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about how we can use recitals as an opportunity to gather reviews. So um, these are very unique opportunities, right? Every time we put on a performance, not only are we able to showcase our students' strengths um, and foster the sense of community within our studios and possibly attract new students, but we're also able to get a lot of great marketing materials. So if you're excited about this, let me know. All right, so we're gonna start with our first point here. Oh, and I'd love to know, okay, if you're tuning in, when is your recital? Are, are you doing one this spring? Let us know your date so we can cheer you on. Ah, so good. All right. So our first, um, our first tip here is to lean into creating pre-recital buzz. Uh, now I know a lot of the prep that you're doing prior to these events. Nobody ever sees it, right? There's a lot of checklists involved. There's a lot of preparing the students, making sure that everyone. Um, you know, has their pieces in order, has their songs in order. Um, And then we have other things like, um, you know, getting the venue all lined up, uh, you know, planning the refreshments, planning uh, certificates or awards or, or, you know, there's so many things that go into this. It's easy to forget to document that and use that as a way to create buzz about the event. We want not only our clients, like our students and their parents, to be excited about the event, but also the the community as a whole. So I encourage you to take some behind the scenes photos. Think about, you know, a pile of music that you're arranging, like here's the order of the recital or like (laughs) your messy desk as you're trying to figure out all of the things, your checklists that you're going through, or maybe a quick video of um, you saying like, oh, I'm so excited because today we have finished X, Y, and Z for the recital. Use this as an opportunity to create buzz. And this is something that you can post on your social media accounts. It's things that you can send out in newsletters to your studios. There's so many opportunities to show the work that goes uh, on behind the scenes. So that's the first thing. Create those teasers. Um, 
Oh, look at this. Okay, before before I continue with the information here, I want to bring up some of these great things. So let's cheer each other on. This is fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, Karen says recital a uh, gateway festival in May and studio recital in June. Okay, we've got a recital on May 4th. We've got one on May 5th. Um, and, oh, let, I love the name of your studio, The String Connection. That's so cool. Leishan, June 8th recital. It's coming up. Melissa, voice on May 11th and piano on May 19th. Oh, my gosh. Craig's got his on April 27th, so that's right around the corner. I love your theme. They're doing songs from movies and TV shows, and you're encouraging students to wear costumes. That's so much fun. Um, Karen, June 15th. Ah, okay. Cut the Kauai Gallery out of your clothes. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, Susan, May 24th with Suzuki Violin. This is great. Um, and Craig shares, he says, for social media buzz, I'm going to create a Canva image that previews the performers like a movie awards show. Oh, I can't wait to see you do that. That's going to be really cool. All right. So thank you so much, you all, for, for sharing all of this really great information. It makes me so excited to hear about what you're doing. Um, I see Dar Music Pro on Instagram says June 20th. Um, and I see there are quite a few people that have also commented um, on Instagram. So I will make sure to reach out to you if you put the the word Sunday, the word Sunday. Naomi's doing hers on Sunday. That's amazing. Um, Instagrammers, if you put the word recital down below, we'll get you the show notes and I'll keep an eye on that. All right. So creating pre-recital buzz. So, you know, do those, do those teasers behind the scenes, let people know what you're working on. Uh, a couple of other things that you can do to create that pre-recital buzz um, is consider engaging with the local press. You could craft a press release that highlights this, if your recital is open to the public, um, which some are, some aren't, but if it is, you can create a press release that highlights the, the recital's unique, unique aspects. So reaching out to local newspapers, maybe radio, radio stations or community websites um, that list events and things like that. Another thing that you can do is um, if you have like a public event, you can create an event through Google Business Profiles um, and it will actually show up in local events around your area. So that's the second thing. The third thing about creating buzz um, is to, you know, lean into using those community boards. So if you have, like, I, you've, if you've been around for a while, you've t heard me talk about my local Dairy Queen. They no longer have their community board, but they did for a really, really long time. They had a community board where we could post um, things about events. I would post about my summer camps, et cetera, or just put my business card up. If you have any community boards, whether they're online or um, or in person, maybe there's something at your library, you could also post there as well. And don't forget those local um, those local Facebook groups. That could be another um, great opportunity to use those social media teasers to post some behind the scenes stuff to say, I'm so proud of the students at our studio who've been working so hard um, on their pieces this spring. Um, you know, I'm, and I'm very excited uh, to hear them perform on X date. So all kinds of ways to create pre-recital buzz. Um, you could take short snippets of um, working on a piece with a student and, you know, create little reels that say like, um, coming soon, you know, think about, I love what, what Craig is saying about like his, if we, if we kind of riff on what he's doing with the movie theme for his, um, for his recital, I think of that that voiceover that we hear on those like really intense movie trailers, like in a world where blah, 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 right? You know, like we can do, so we can have a lot of fun with these opportunities to create buzz. So I encourage you to do that. Um, so that's our first tip here when it comes to really tapping into those recitals and creating marketing gold out of it. Now in the second tip, what we're going to be looking at is how do we capture the moment? Okay. So I'm going to tell a couple stories from, um, you know, my experience as someone who did many, many recitals over the years. Um, I so badly wanted to make sure that there were photos and videos of things in, in recitals. And there were some years at the beginning when I was newish to, to doing this, I would forget. Um, and then I would be so disappointed afterwards. So, um, 
you know, if you ever find yourself in those those shoes where you've forgotten to get photos, um, my tip here is don't be afraid to reach out to parents. I did that for a couple of years when I was newish at things. Um, I managed to get like one big picture of all of us like up on the stage at the end, which is a great cover photo for those Facebook pages, right? And can also be a great photo for your website. Um, but I forgot to get individual photos. So in those cases, I reached out to parents individually and I told them, I said, oh my gosh, I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that I saw you taking photos during the, the recital. If you have any photos that you'd be willing to share with me that I could use um, on our Facebook page, like that would be so amazing. Um, and side note, make sure that you have those photo release forms in place. If you don't already, um, that can be, you know, something that you add um, into your policy for next year. It could also be something that you literally hand out at the event. You could have a photo release form um, that's part of your, uh, that is part of your program, right? Have a little insert in there. It's important to have that in place so that we have permission from parents, guardians to use those photos online. Always important. Um, so how do we take, how do we make the most out of these, these events without having to do all the work ourselves. There's several different ways that we can do this. And actually, I love this. So Karen, Karen, you're right on, on point. She said, I put my phone on a mic stand um, and then my husband runs the video and takes the photos. Fabulous. I love that. So think about who at this event can help you out, right? So if you have a partner or spouse or a friend or another family member that can run that camera during the event that takes a little pressure off of you so that you can be present and in the moment, um, especially if you are responsible for introducing each student. I took that off, personally, I took that off my plate and I made recitals um, a thing where students had to introduce themselves. And every single week for like a month or more leading up to the recital, we would have the students practice introducing themselves and their piece in the lesson. It was a really great opportunity. You know, kids need more public speaking opportunities. <laughs> um, so certainly find someone to help you take those photos. You may also consider... If you are holding uh, an event at a really nice looking venue and you think, you know, this could be an opportunity for me to get some like branding action shots of things going on, hire a photographer. Um, now you will need to, you know, price that out and build that into your pricing for the recital if you charge uh, for recitals um, separately from tuition or build that cost into your tuition for next year so that you have that already built in and set aside so that you can hire that professional photographer and have them come to take, um, you know, take those amazing photos because they can get way close in with those really cool cameras, um, you know, of students playing at the piano or singing or playing guitar, whatever they're doing, um, and also get uh, photos of everyone together and get photos after the recital when you're talking to parents, when you are, um, you know, celebrating with students. Have them get those behind the scenes photos because that can just be a really fabulous opportunity to get materials for your websites, to get materials for your socials that are authentic, right? Those types of materials are so much better than the stock photos that we can find on Canva or whatever you're using. Um, being able to see you in action with your clients. There's no better social proof than that. So secure photography help. That's one thing. Then also think about, um, you know, how can I use these photos after the fact? One of the things that I've seen, um, and I, I, you know, when I'm examining social media accounts from clients, um, one of the things that I notice is that post recital, we get this like, <sighs> right? After, I don't know, how do you guys feel immediate after the recital is done and you've packed everything in the car? What do you do? We used to have a ritual. We used to have a ritual after everything was packed in the car and I was ready to go and I could like finally take that deep breath and relax. We would go to a restaurant down the road and I would get a martini. 
Yes, there we go. It's done. Have a drink. <laughs> um, so what I encourage you to do post recital, once you've had the opportunity to relax a bit, take a nap, <laughs> uh, think about how you're going to roll out this material, not all at once, but use it over the period of a month or so. Um, I, I've seen cases where people like on their social media, they'll do one big photo dump and that's it. And yes, that post will probably get a lot of traction. Um, but wouldn't it be so much nicer because it takes so much work to do these events if we portioned them out over a period of time so that we could lengthen the opportunity to use that as marketing. Um, and, you know, so think about it. Sit down afterwards and, and make a plan about how am I going to use this material? How am I going to roll it out on the socials? How am I going to roll it out on YouTube, et cetera, and things like that? How am I going to use these photos as an opportunity to connect more deeply with the clients in my studio by sending emails with photos of their kid and congratulations, et cetera, or having those photos printed and in the studio ready for students to take home. There's so many opportunities there um, when we really sit down and we get strategic about capturing those moments. Um, ah, this is great. So Craig says, I'll be live streaming my recital as well. Very, very smart. I love that. <laughs> yes, this is my, my post recital song. It's martini time. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, Oh, Dar Music Pro, you are so welcome. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I'm really glad that you're enjoying the content. Um, I wish I could bring Instagram comments on the on the on the screen. Sadly, I cannot. Um, all right, so let's get to our the final point here about you know turning these recitals into the gold. This is the most important point. So take notes. All right, here we go. It's really rare that we get everyone in our studio in one place at the same time, right? Just because of how, you know, how our, our business is set up. The, you know, the majority of people are teaching one-on-one -on -one lessons. If you have group lessons, you have that opportunity to see more people at once. But it's rare that we get everybody in the same place, right? We've got our student clients. We've got our parent clients all in one building together at the same time. This is the perfect time to leverage your recital to get reviews. Why is it perfect? It's all about timing, right? Um, after this recital, you're, everyone's on this post-recital high, right? This is the optimal moment to gather positive feedback. So a couple of things that you can consider for your upcoming recital, right? Um, I want you to think about how can I make it convenient for parents to leave reviews? How can I ask them to leave reviews? Um, and, and then how can I utilize those reviews later? So let's go over this briefly. You are at the end of your recital. Things have gone beautifully. The parents are smiling. The kiddos are relieved because they're done. Um, and you get the opportunity to say some final things at the end of the show. This is a great moment to thank everyone for being there. This is something, I used to have a script in each one of my um, recital programs that was a thank you specifically to all the parents, guardians, and family members and friends who are responsible for not only driving those, those kids to lessons every week, but making sure that they're following up with practice at home, that they're encouraging them and playing an active role as um, you know, this support system, because I would talk about the parent, the, the parent teacher student triangle, I would use that opportunity in every recital to talk about that. And then add to it to say, thank you so much for all of the support that you've had here. Um, I just want to thank every single family member and every single student here. You are the reason why Sarah's Music Studio is what it is today. And I just want to take a moment to say, if I could clone every single one of you. I would <laughs> um, because I want more students and more families like you. So if you feel so inclined and you have enjoyed your time here at the studio, if you could take a couple minutes right now 
to leave a review on our Facebook page or on our Google business page. It would mean the absolute world to me. So thank you. Um, thank you for the time um, working with your kid and thank you for the effort that goes into writing those positive reviews. Make it easy for them. So make the ask and then have a way that they can get to those reviews really quickly. The best way to do that is to use QR codes. So you can create you can create them for free on Canva, by the way. Just Google Canva QR code and you'll find the tutorial that shows you how to do it. Create QR codes that lead to your Facebook reviews tab. Social media course members know how to find that because we have a whole tutorial on that. Um, or how to get to your reviews, like the special reviews link for your Google business profile. Again, social media course, if you're in there, there's a video that walks you through it. Um, so make a QR code that leads directly to those things. And you can put the QR code in different places. So you could put it on the back of your program. You could create a review station where there is a QR code like up on, I don't know what they call those plastic things that you put like, a thing in and it holds it up. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Um, so have one of those somewhere in um, somewhere in the recital venue where people can very easily scan that code and have a call to action that says, um, you know, uh, thanks for coming to our recital today. Did you enjoy your time? Please leave a review for us at Facebook or at Google Business. Um, so that's, you know, an opportunity for them to do that. You could also take things a step further and have a, um, a photo props station. We used to set this up at my studio. We would set up a little um, background and then we'd have some photo props and we'd have a little sign that would say, um, you know, strike a pose and tag us on Facebook at or Facebook or Instagram at Sarah's Music Studio. So then parents would take photos, parents and kids would take photos together with the props. They would tag us on social media. And that was this beautiful, it, it's not a technical review, right? But it's like the best kind of social proof that you can get. So utilize those recitals, those opportunities where you're all together to make the ask. And I know that if you've never done that before, it might feel a little awkward at first. So practice. <laughs> Write a script for yourself. Say it out loud. Um, you know, practice it in front of someone, just like you ask your kids to practice introducing their pieces. Um, all right. So I see some good questions here. Before we do our recap, we'll dive into the questions. If you have any takeaways from today that you would like to share or any advice about spring recitals, now's the moment. We're going to look at the um, questions here. Let's see. Um, okay, so Craig says, I started doing compliment cards last year at my recital. I'll be doing it again this year. And since I bought a laminator, I'm going to put them all together and laminate them for each student. I love that. Um, compliment. I, I actually forgot about that. Compliment cards were something that I did um, for a number of years. We would have a sheet printed out with the name of every student. Um, and they were, we would give those to each student and they had to write something nice about that student's performance. So, you know, not only was that giving them something to do, <laughs> it was also, um, you know, honing their listening st skills and having them really pay attention to the person in front of them. And I loved taking those cards with I will say when you had like 30 students in your studio, cutting up all of those compliment cards was probably the worst task ever. <laughs> but I would take those all, I'd put them into envelopes, and then at the following lesson, post-recital, um, it was a great opportunity to read through each one together um, and get that fabulous, um, fabulous stuff. Uh, Karen asks, what about handing out a physical form and collecting them at the recital? I love it. Okay, so Karen... If you are trying to gather reviews that you're going to use on your website, that can be fabulous. The reason that I mention having them do the reviews on Facebook or Google Business Profile is because you can't leave those reviews, but they can. Um, but if you want to gather testimonials, um, that is a really great idea. So you could have like a little thing where people could write a testimonial for your website. Um, Craig says that he has a photo booth, a red carpet happening as well. That works really fantastic. Um, okay, we have a question from Shakay says, 
does anyone have a suggestion for special awards that you present to high school students? Ooh, I love that. So let's definitely have a conversation about that in the comments. Um, I'll come back and, um, and, and give you some ideas of some of the things that I've done throughout the years. And I bet you that there are a lot of people here who have some great ideas as well. So if you have ever put together um, rewards uh, for your students, like let's share those ideas. Um, and Craig also shares that he has a 15 year old paid assistant. I think I know who that is. It's great to have those assistants behind the scenes, right? This is fantastic. All right, so I think we're ready to do our uh, recap here. Um, and I'm going to mention, since it's that time of year, we're mid-April, we're quickly headed towards the end of spring and into summer. If you are looking for assistance, if you are looking to refresh your studio and you're thinking ahead to fall of 2024 and you are considering some shifts in your business, I have space for two clients right now, one-on-one -on -one clients at Savvy Music Studio. I also have opportunity for single one-off sessions. So if you're ever looking for support from a coach and somebody to help you suss out your ideas, figure out what's going to work best for you and get systems in place, hit me up. You can find out more about that at SavvyMusicStudio.com. Um, okay, let's do our little recap. If you've enjoyed today's broadcast, do me a solid by taking watch me, watch me ask for reviews right now, right? I'm <laughs> This is, this is how you do it. If you've enjoyed the content here at Savvy Music Studio and you'd like to show your appreciation, if you could take a moment, there are a couple of things that you can do. One, you can look us up on Facebook and write a little re review. We would love to hear that. Two, even easier than that, take a look at this video. If you've enjoyed this specific piece of content, hit the heart button, hit the, the thumbs up, you know, like or heart this video share it with teacher friends who you think would appreciate these free broadcasts that we do and just let us know um, that you're appreciating what we're offering here thanks <laughs> see it wasn't that awkward <laughs> okay so here we go let's do our recap sorry i have to scroll back in my in my notes here um, I love this. We got a great t takeaway here. The takeaway was asking for reviews. So smart, so smart. All right. Drum roll, please, as we do this recap. So if you tuned in a little bit late and you missed some of the points earlier on, I'm going to do them real fast. Here we go. It's recital season, and you know what that means. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes, and you're working really hard to get this recital ready. And I want you to remember something very important. Recitals give us this golden opportunity to create marketing for our studio. So here are three ways that you can take those student showcases and spin them into marketing gold. The first thing is this. Prior to your recital, one of the things that I encourage all my clients to do is to build recital buzz. So take pictures behind the scenes when you're working on things in the recital, whether it's prepping things for um, the reception afterwards, or it's putting together the program, or maybe it's a little video of you talking about how excited you are for the recital. Create that pre-recital buzz. You can post things on your social media, maybe little updates on your website, send out newsletters to your studio. And don't forget also to take this into the wider community, especially if you were doing a recital that's open to the public reach out to the local press get a um a press what do they call it <laughs> get a press release in place and put all of those things together to let the community know what's going on during a recital you are responsible for a lot of things and one of those things that may not need to be on your plate is capturing the moment there are so many beautiful moments that happen in recitals, and this is a perfect opportunity for you to get photos and videos of your clients doing amazing things, of you working alongside of your clients and of your whole studio together. But that's a lot of responsibility for you if you're already doing a lot of things. So my bit of advice is to find someone else who can be in charge of taking those photos and videos, whether it's a partner, spouse, um, a family friend, whoever. Give that responsibility to someone else. And if you really want to bump things up a notch, 
let's make sure that we have budgeted for a professional photographer because this is a great opportunity to get professional branding photos that you can use on your social media and on your website. So much better than stock photos. Finally, the recital is over. And now you have a massive opportunity that I do not want you to miss. At the end of your recital, when everybody is on that post-recital high and everything has gone smashingly well, even if, you know, there have been some snafus, this is the perfect opportunity to thank the parents and students for being there and to ask them to leave a positive review on your Facebook page, on your Google business profile, or to write a testimonial for your website. So put on your brave pants, make the ask right there live at the recital and make it super easy for people to do that. Create QR codes that'll lead to people directly to your review tabs so that they don't have to think about it. They just have to take a couple of minutes to write that glowing review, which I can guarantee they're willing to do because they came to your recital and they were clapping at the end. All right. So that is it for this broadcast. If you want to learn more about how you can spin recitals into marketing gold, then make sure to drop the word recital down below and we will link you to, to the full broadcast of this and also give you the opportunity to get the show notes from today and to join our newsletter. So if you've enjoyed this, hey, maybe leave a review for Savvy Music Studio. It'd be really awesome of you. Thanks so much for being here. We will see you next time. And in the meantime, stay savvy and stay you because you are an amazing teacher and there is no one in the world quite like you. And I think you are pretty dang awesome. Thanks for being here.